Hey, how we doing today? This is the beginning of week two for the Rev Fire Group Apparatus Conference and Expo. My name is Chris McClune. I'll be your host for today. Wanted to let you know real quick just what's going on today. We've got two truck walkarounds. That's what you're tuned into right now. Ferrera HD107 aerial and a Ferrera pumper with the SAM pump control system. From 11 to 1, we've given you the opportunity again to meet some Rev Fire Group Ferrera representatives on the uh, on the showroom floor from one to two don't forget fdic international powered education we've got may day monday tips and techniques for firefighter survival and that is with chief tony carroll then we'll and that is from one to two from two to four thirty you can go back to the rev showroom meet with ferrara representatives to talk about the trucks you've seen today or get more information on the brand in general I've got some guests to introduce you to today. First of all, with from uh, Jersey City Fire Department, retired Battalion Chief Bill Peters. He will be with us today, and we'll be talking about both rigs. We'll be talking about those rigs with Paul Christensen. He is the aerial sales manager for Ferrara. We also have with us today Jason Luke, the director of sales. And uh, we're going to throw it over to Burt McCutcheon, who is the vice president and general manager of Ferrara. He has a few words from Ferrara today before we get into the video. Burt? Hey, good morning, guys. I just wanted to start by thanking you, Chris and Bill, and the Clarion team for hosting us here as Ferrara does week two of the Rev Fire Truck Expo. As you can see from the look on Jason's face, we're extremely excited to be here this week and show you our Absolutely. products and go through our products and uh, just show you some of the features that are available on our uh, heavy duty built fire truck. So we appreciate being here today and we thank you guys for helping right, us great. out. Great. Well, first uh, we're gonna get, appreciate we're gonna it. jump into the uh, video today. Our first video today is gonna cover the Ferrara HD 107 aerial and you'll probably recognize uh, the fellow's voice who's doing the narration for that because we'll be talking to him uh, just after the uh, video is done. So uh, if we could cut to the, uh, the HD 107 aerial. Ferrera's HD-107 rear mount aerial is the do-all quint that's perfect for your fire department. This heavy-duty four-section rear mount aerial has a 750-pound tip load while flowing 1,500 gallons per minute. As on all Ferrera aerials, the HD-107 has no limits on aerial placement when you are at the rated tip load or waterway flow. Ferrera's HD-107 doesn't use envelope controls, meaning its 750-pound tip load is yours where you need it, regardless of elevation, rotation, or extension. There are no hot spots or limits where you position the ladder. The HD-107 has an operational range of minus 8 to plus 72 degrees. The 72-degree max climbing angle translates into a longer aerial structure which gives you additional horizontal reach. The HD-107 has a vertical reach of 107 feet at 72 degrees and 101 feet horizontal reach at 0 degree elevation. The 750-pound tip load is determined with the aerial at 0 degrees elevation, 100% extension, and the fog nozzle turned 90 degrees to the side. This truck has an 11 foot 11 inch travel height and 41 foot 3 inch overall length. It measures only 40 feet 9 inches bumper to back of body, meaning its compact 238 inch wheelbase is easily maneuvered through congested city streets. Next, let's look inside the Inferno cab. This is our extended length model with an 8 inch raised roof. You'll notice the raise starts over the driver and officer seats to give them the same additional headroom as in the crew cab. This cab is constructed from heavy duty roll cage extruded aluminum subframe. To this robust structure, 3 16 inch thick marine grade aluminum plate is welded. The cab dash is made from welded aluminum and brush finished black aluminum instrument and switch panels. The overhead console, glove box, and inner door panels are also aluminum. 
The crew cab floor is flat from side to side, making it easy and safe to exit either side when responding to a highway call. The fire body features Ferrera's famous heavy-duty extruded aluminum construction. The body starts with a tough subframe consisting of a series of 3 by 4 inch double I-beams. These are attached to the aerial torque box with two spring-loaded grade 8 bolts per I-beam. The springs are important as they compress or decompress when the outriggers are set, relieving stress on the body welds. The body itself is made from 2 inch by 4 inch and 3 inch by 3.5 inch tubular extrusions each with a 3 16 inch wall thickness. These extrusions are all welded together into an interlocking grid for a super strong structure. Hinge compartment doors also use a 3 16 inch thick aluminum on the outer pan welded to an 8 inch thick inner pan for a solid door. The door is attached with stainless steel nuts and bolts making it easily adjustable. Looking at the compartment layout this HD107 body features plenty of storage with full height compartments on both sides of the truck. At the rear, you have a blitz line for 200 feet of either 2.5 inch or 3 inch hose pre-connected on a rollout tray for easy reloading. The pump is a Hale Q-Max rated at 2000 GPM. It's controlled by a Fire Research Pump Boss pressure governor the HD-107 aerial has four sections constructed from heavy-duty 100,000 PSI steel. This ladder has a 750-pound tip load while flowing 1,500 GPM, regardless of ladder position. The four H-style out and down outriggers can be set at 16 or 18 feet side to side. You can achieve the full tip load with only a 16-foot stance, but you still have the flexibility to go to 18 feet if you have enough room. The forward outriggers on Ferrera's 4-jack aerials are always directly behind the cab. This gives the operator the ability to level the truck when it's facing downhill. This increases the number of situations you can use the aerial and shortens the setup time when the driver doesn't have to reposition the truck to face uphill. The forward jacks are integral with the torque box connected by massive underslung beams and vertical reinforcements at the front of the torque tube. This provides the strength needed to support the weight of the cab, engine, transmission, and front axle without the frame sagging downward. At the turntable, you'll see our open grate, non-slip surface that comes in handy in the wintertime. Turntable controls feature direct hydraulic valves, meaning when you pull a lever, you are actually opening a valve and not relying on a computer to tell a relay to open the valve. Thanks for checking out the Inferno HD107 rear mount aerial quint. Let's quickly recap the features on this truck. It's built on Ferrera's Inferno heavy duty custom fire chassis powered with a Cummins 15 liter 500 horsepower engine. It has an extended length cab with an 8 inch raised roof and seating for 6. The heavy duty rear mount aerial ladder has a vertical reach of 107 feet and a horizontal reach of 101 feet. The aerial ladder is rated for a 750 pound tip load while flowing 1500 gallons per minute. The Hale Q-Max pump is rated at 2000 gallons per minute has pre-connected discharge at the front bumper, three cross lays, and a rear two and a half inch blitz line. There's a 500 gallon onboard water tank. There's also 174 feet of ground ladders with 158 feet stored inside the full length torque box. The fire body is Ferrera's heavy duty extruded aluminum with over 200 cubic feet of storage and full height compartments on both sides of the truck. The Easy Stack hose bed will carry 1,000 feet of 5 inch LDH hose. Like what you see? Call your local Ferrera dealer today or send an email at the address listed at the bottom of the screen.
All right, we are back. You are uh, watching the Rev Fire Group Apparatus Conference and Expo. This is the uh, first of our two walkarounds today. Uh, when uh, w before we get over to Paul Christensen, uh, did want to mention a couple things. First of all, Bill and I did not intentionally wear the same color shirt today. <laughs> that was totally by accident. Uh, second of all, for a little piece of trivia for everyone. Uh, I don't want to prematurely age Bill or uh, Paul. But however, uh, Paul, uh, uh, Bill was Paul's first com uh, first customer back in the day uh, when Bill was still specking rigs for uh, for Jersey City. So, uh, but before we get in, uh, before we uh, cut over to Paul, Bill, now that you've seen the video, what uh, what are some of your uh, first impressions of, of the rig? Well, I I was really impressed with the whole thing. The um, the size of the rig. Um, one of the things I thought was really good was that the aerial ladder didn't extend over the front. Now I I know it's in some designs that's absolutely necessary, but for a 107 foot aerial and be compact like that, uh, I think is really good. Plus the uh, the tip load was very impressive uh, for a, a you know for an aerial. Um, that's one of the things you don't. Uh, you don't want to be uh, thinking about, you know, overloading the aerial, uh, but 107, uh, 750 pounds with water flowing is uh, is really impressive. Okay, now if we can uh, get uh, cut over to Paul now, who uh, whose voice you will recognize uh, as the as the narrator <laughs> of the vehicle as well. Uh, we're going to try to do what we did last week. We're going to start in the front of truck, front of the truck, and uh, work our way back. Uh, Paul, if you can make your way over uh, to the front bumper there, I've got a question for you uh, just about what some of the other options sure. are uh, in terms of um, in, in terms of that front bumper. We know that truck companies often take on other responsibilities. Uh, I, I know for, for my area, a lot of truck companies are also doing vehicle rescue and things like that. So uh, on that front bumper, are there are there options available uh, besides, uh, you know, piping, you know, uh, plumbing, uh, plumbing, some attack lines. Could you do, uh, could you, could you carry rescue tools up there? Maybe a reel or something like that. Absolutely. You can see we have a front jump line on this truck right here with a center hose tray. This will carry about 150 foot of inch and three quarter, but you do have other options. You can do a full width tray. That's about four inches. It's not muted. Sure, Bill. Like I was saying about the uh, about the uh, about it's the vehicle muted. rescue tools. Well, well, up in Jersey City, were your were your truck companies straight truck companies that that's all they did was like you know search and rescue and 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 ventilation and all that, or did they get into some of the some of the rescue as well? Not every department has a heavy rescue that's going to blow all over the city, you know, going for vehicle wrecks. So what what was uh what what was it like up in Jersey City? Yeah, the the truck companies were straight truck companies. Um, the um, they had no pumps on the uh, on the trucks. The trucks were fed by engines, and obviously the city had a good hydrant system, so you know it was unnecessary to have to have a pump on the aerial. And uh, as far as vehicle rescues go, we had the uh, the rescue and the squad company would basically uh, doing vehicle rescues. They would dispatch you know an engine and truck right away. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, if it was a light extrication, but for the most part, um, the rescue company or the squad company had all the, uh, the heavy rescue tools and so forth. One but of the, it, I'm going to, sorry, go ahead. No, you had a good question about the front bumper because I, I know a lot of people do, uh, you know, everything with on one truck because, uh, you know, sometimes at limited manpower, you're only getting one out. And you want to have uh, the capabilities to do many, uh, many things. Okay. Oh, we got Paul back. I'm seeing him on the on the monitor here. Paul, uh, could you just uh, revisit that uh, that question again? It was are there some other options for the front bumper besides plumbing sure. uh, a hand line or two? Absolutely. You can uh, do a full width tray, so it'll be about four inches deep, going right down to the uh, top of the extension rails. And you can set a, uh, uh, some battery-operated extrication tools in there. Or if you still run with, uh, with the plumb tools, you can put a reel outboard here, a reel outboard here where the cue sits, and then crisscross your uh, tools in a deep well in the, uh, in the center. 
Uh, and of course, in addition to plumbed hydraulic reels, you could do obviously a electric rewind cord reel. Um, you know, you can do a, a small booster reel. We've done that before. So really, you know, you kind of the sky's the limit as far as options. We're okay. And what builder. and what uh, what size is that front bumper extension? This is 21 okay. inches right here. So your range of uh, lengths will go from six inches out to 28. You can go a little bit longer if you need to. Okay, now while we're, while we're there, I know Bill had a couple of questions about the monitor on this truck. Bill, you wanna take it? Yeah, sure. Um, Paul, I, uh, I was wondering about uh, tip controls for the monitor. Um, you, can, you obviously can control the monitor from the turntable. Um, do you have uh, monitor controls up at the tip as well? Sure. Standard on all straight stick aerials from Ferrera, we put a uh, tip control at the monitor, and uh, it's on the driver's side of the bolt-on egress section. Okay. Um, the the other question I had was, um, do you offer a pinnable monitor where you could keep that monitor back at the third section or pin it to the fly? And um, if so, how is that controlled? Yeah, great question. In fact, we don't call it a pinnable. We call ours a positional waterway uh, because we don't pull a pin. You can see there's a shift mechanism out there at the tip of the ladder. Right now it's set to go uh, in water tower mode all the way out to the uh, uh, end of the fourth section. There's an electric actuated shift at the turntable. When that's uh, engaged, then the monitor will stay at the tip of the number three section and then you can use it in yeah, rescue mode. That, that's uh, important. Yo, um, I'm showing my age talking about a pinnable monitor. I was uh, unfortunately involved in a uh, NIOSH investigation of a pinnable monitor that uh, was launched out the end of the aerial and created a fatality. And um, I was glad that the, the, the NFPA committee uh, went with one that made it a positive locking thing. It's just I was uh, curious about on this truck if it was, uh, if it was available. That's, that's a great feature. Right, it's standard on all of our Ferrera Street Street The, the other thing, Paul, I wanted to know is, I see that you have a, um, a, a an adjustable fog nozzle on there. Is this um, is the aerial rated to use the smoothbore stack tip nozzles on the uh, on the end of the aerial? Because uh, some people prefer that. Absolutely, you can take the uh, the fog nozzle off and uh, and swap out to uh, to a smoothbore or a set of uh, stack tips, either one. Okay, great. Um, also, um, a 750 pound tip load is uh, impressive in itself, but then uh, you said with water flowing, so you have the additional weight in the waterway and, and the uh, reactionary forces of the, of the water flowing. Um, is, the, is the ladder have a, uh, an increased rating when you don't have, when you're not flowing water or you have no water in the waterway? No, we do a, uh, keep it simple on straight stick aerials. So it's a wet dry, one rating covers it all. So it's uh, 750 pounds wet or dry. Different from our platforms, of course, which are gonna have different weight uh, ratings for wet and dry. But this HD 107 is 750 pounds regardless. Well, 750 pounds is pretty impressive seeing that uh, 250 pounds is, uh, is all that's required in the uh, 1901 standard. So um, I guess, Chris, back. Right, that's well, Ferrer, yeah. it's heavy duty, baby. <laughs> Very good. Chris? Um, yeah, Paul, if you could uh, uh, make your way to uh, one, of the, one of the sets of outriggers, whichever, whichever one you prefer. I got a couple of questions about, uh, about sure. them. Um, first of all, I noticed in the video that um, there you were able to uh, you were able to attach the jack pads to the outriggers. Is that some is that an option or is that something that is coming standard right. on on Ferrera aerials now? Right. It's an option, but uh, it's pretty popular with it. It's on most of the trucks that we do. So we recess a magnet in the uh, poly pad, and you can slap the pad on the bottom of the outrigger panel so it takes away all the guesswork of where do I drop the pad and really helps improve your setup time when you're at the scene. Was that originally a customer request or is that something that uh, Ferrara uh, developed? 
Uh, I would love to say it was my idea, but it's not. It, was, it came from one of our customers, and uh, we developed the product uh, from there. And uh, so it's been really successful for us over about the last 10 years. That's important. I mean, I think that's important to mention. You know, a lot of a lot of what we see in fire truck fire apparatus design and specs, there it, it's driven by you know some some of the things that I mean I've known throughout my career were were uh, some of them certainly were innovations from the different manufacturers, but so much of your innovations. So many of your innovations come from uh, customer requests and, and customer specific requests that you then that you then engineer into your product. So always important to, to remind people that, uh, you know, uh, don't don't be afraid to ask for something, you know, if, even if you think it's a little out there, you know, you're right. And it's especially. Yeah. That's especially true with us, you know, because we are a custom builder. So we do end up putting a lot of uh, those innovations that the customers come up, come up with into well, our product. Kudos line. to whoever that customer was who came up with that idea and you guys for developing it because I think that really speeds up setup time. I mean, I've seen people go with uh, laser pointers attached to show where the outrigger is going to land and things like that so they could set the plates. Right. But that certainly uh, speed, speeds the operation up. It sure does. Yes, sir. All right. I would like to start to get into some of our Q&A from the audience at this point. We do have uh, questions coming in. Don't forget, uh, anyone who does have a question, there is an ask a question box on your screen uh, that you can use to uh, that you can use to ask us some questions. Um, first, uh, let's see here. Can you explain the dual extension retraction system and the benefits of it? You're talking the extension retraction uh, cylinders? Sure, there's a Siamese, uh, uh, basically a push me pull you, right? So there's uh, two sets of uh, extension and retraction cylinders instead of just one pair. So that's underneath the, the base section. We can't show that on the, uh, on the camera shot right now, but uh, it does give you a really nice uh, rapid and smooth extension and retraction on the ladder. Okay. Uh, what uh, as as that truck sits there, what's what's the overall height of that truck? The travel height. This measures 11 foot 11 inches. That's our standard travel height. If you have an older station where you're concerned about getting it down into a uh, to a low travel height, you can take this model all the way down to 11 foot three if need be. Okay, and I wanted to talk a little. We got some questions coming in uh, regard, regarding the uh, the cab. Um, one of them is uh, you, you mentioned in the video that we have the uh, that we have an extended cab. What are the different uh, cab extension options available on 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 this Inferno cab? Okay, you can go all the way from a uh, forty-five inch short cab to a 54 inch medium to this model right here, which is a 62 inch extended medium. And you can go with a pump and a tank, one, one cab size larger to the 68 inch long. If you're no pump and no tank, then we have a 74 and an 80 inch cab available also. And of course we are, again, a custom builder. So you can get that range in between some of those links if that doesn't work for you. And the, uh for compartmentation on the rig, what is the storage capacity for the compartments on this? This uh, model here is uh, a little over 200 cubic feet. It's about 212 cubic feet. But you can uh, uh, add compartments on here where you can kind of do what I call optimizing the uh, compartment space depending on your hose load. We've actually built this model uh, truck right here with uh, 310 cubic feet of storage before with a pump and a tank. And Chris? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to ask Chris about um, uh, setting the outriggers. If the um, if uh, self-leveling outriggers are provided or available. They are available. We don't have it on this truck here, um, but it is available as an option. Our standard setup that we have for outriggers are these large paddle style switches here. Really nice because I can push here on the switch. I know it's going to extend out. I can push here. I know it's going to penetrate to the ground. So I can keep my eyes on the outrigger and not necessarily on the tiny switch. We got large switches uh, back here. Yeah, they look pretty good. We've got a question here about 
Absolutely. Got a question here about engine options. Um, what are the engine options on, I guess, you know, for, for your aerial lineup, but uh, specifically for the Inferno, uh, every, you know, each chassis sometimes has a different, uh, different you know, engine size that it can accommodate. Uh, for, for these trucks here, sure. uh, what, are, what are your engine options? Well, I guess first, what is, what, what is driving this truck, and then what are the other options uh, should departments want to go down that road? This particular truck has an ISX 15, 500 horsepower, uh, but of course for the new uh, 2021 model year, the engine availability in the Inferno is gonna be X12 from Cummins up to 500 horsepower, or an X15 also from Cummins, which is gonna go all the way up to 605 horsepower. Now, when you and Bill were first specking out the rigs <laughs> for Jersey City, did you ever think at that point that we'd be talking about engines with this many, with, with, with this much horsepower today? <laughs> well, I think I think that was the episode where where Bill was uh, running away from Dino with the car where his feet were, uh, were actually pedaling. No, no, it was um, 8V92 450 horse yeah, was kind of the max. That's back right, then. an 8V92. That was uh, that was a big engine, dripped oil all over the floor from the uh, from the air boxes, but. Uh, that was considered a big engine. Yep, yep. Boy, we're showing our age, Paul. Yeah, amazingly, it powered a platform. Yeah, see, I, I, I didn't know, even right? have to. I didn't even have to age you guys. You guys did it for yourselves. Well, I, I was, uh, you know, I, I was glad to go from gasoline engines to diesel engines in Jersey City. So <laughs> now you're showing your age, Bill. Yeah, for sure. Well, I didn't. At least I didn't get the horses out of the barns. A <laughs> uh, <there. laughs> um, couple other questions about the about the aerial. Um, uh, although you didn't talk about it in the video for this rig, uh, does it, are there remote controls available? For straight sticks, yes sir. You can get uh, wireless remote to operate the ladder and the uh, monitor. Oh. So you can operate the ladder from about 300 feet away from the uh, apparatus. Um, so we'll sell that a lot of times uh, for departments that have either a manpower concern or if they want to just be able to have the ability to operate away from the truck if they had a hazmat scene or something like that. Okay, and I, um, just to, to revisit this, uh, even if you, you did touch on it in the video, uh, can, can you short jack this truck? Yes, you can short jacks. So direct stab on one side, full set on the other, you're gonna be about a 13 foot three inch jack spread. And you can also alley jack it or do a direct stab with all four jacks and operate over the uh, cab. And when you are short jacked, you do have full tip capability on the set side of the truck. So it's still 750 pound tip load flowing 1500 gallons a minute. All right, perfect. Um, I wanted to just touch real quick on something, Paul, if you wanna, we're, uh, Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, I think uh, we're, you're off the hook for now. We're gonna we're gonna actually go back over to the desk to okay. talk to Jason uh, before we go over to the next video. Uh, Jason, could you walk us through the different aerial options available from Ferrara? Yeah. So good question, Chris. We have a 57 foot aerial, the 77 foot aerial, of course a 107 aerial, a rear mount platform at 100 feet a mid-mount platform at 100 foot, an 85 foot mid-mount platform, and last but not least, a Skyflow. And the LP-102. That, that is very popular, popular in the Northeast. All right, perfect. Well, Paul, we'll give you a little break now, uh, but uh, he will be back with us in a minute uh, for, the, for, the next, for, the next, uh, for the next rig. Um, we're gonna roll through now. There, uh, there, we also have today for you a Ferrara uh, cinder pumper uh, with the uh, SAM control system. So let's let's take a look at that and give Paul a break and we'll be back in a few. Here's Ferrera's Cinder Custom Pumper equipped with IDEX Fire and Safety's exciting new SAM control system designed to make the fire pump easier to operate and safer for firefighters. This truck measures only 32 feet 3 inches long and has a travel height of 9 foot 5 inches. 
It's built on a compact 188-inch wheelbase, so it can be easily maneuvered through congested city streets and tight residential neighborhoods. Powered with a Cummins L9 450 horsepower engine, this truck has a heavy-duty, extended-length cinder cab with an 8-inch raised roof and seating for six. The SCBA seats feature Bostrom Securall air pack brackets. The firebody is Ferrera's heavy-duty extruded aluminum with 3x4 I-beam subframe and all 3 16-inch thick marine-grade aluminum hose bed, compartments, running boards, and rear step. The left and right side compartments are full height and the tailboard compartment is extended depth, a full 46 inches deep to easily accommodate a wide variety of equipment. All compartments have ROM roll-up doors. The hose bed has over 100 cubic feet of storage and there is a full width intermediate rear step to use when repacking hose. Ladders are stored between the tank and high side compartments in a 3 16 inch thick aluminum sleeve supported at the rear body and in the pump house. The pump is a Hale QMAX XS rated at 1750 GPM and is controlled through the IDEX SAM system which gives the pump operator the ability to move about the truck with 10 inch touchscreen displays on both pump panels. Upon pump engagement, SAM automatically opens the tank to pump line, supplying the QMAX from the 1,000 gallon polytank. Use an electric actuated Akron Navigator and Hale Master Intake Valves, SAM manages the intakes whether from hydrant or booster tank, as well as all discharges. With a swipe of the touch screen, the pump operator can open and close any valve. Discharges have preset pressures and SAM maintains those pressures through engine RPM management. SAM eliminates pressure spikes in hand lines and water pressure problems due to hydrant loss or pump cavitation. Now let's look inside the cinder cab. This is our extended length model with an 8 inch raised roof. You'll notice the raise starts over the driver and officer seats to give them the same additional headroom as the rear crew cab. This 96 inch wide cab starts with a roll cage welded extruded aluminum subframe. To this tough, heavy duty structure we weld 3 16 inch thick marine grade aluminum alloy plate. The double wall cab face, roof, side and rear walls, floor, engine tunnel and exterior door skins are all 3 16 of an inch thick. And heavy duty doesn't stop with the cab structure. Regardless of chassis model, Ferrera uses an all-aluminum interior with no plastic. The cab dash is made from welded aluminum and brush-finished black aluminum instrument and switch panels. The overhead console, glove box, and inner door panels are also aluminum. This cinder chassis features Ferrera's E2020 electrical system built with quality, reliable components for less downtime. The switches are backlit red when inactive and green when active. The system includes an FRC backing camera and a 3D color display screen to alert the driver of an open door and or unbelted occupant. Thanks for checking out our SAM custom pumper demo. Here's a quick recap of this truck. It's built on Ferrera's Cinder heavy duty custom fire chassis powered by a Cummins L9 450 horsepower engine. The cab is extended length with an 8 inch raised roof and seating for 6. The body, like the cab, has an extruded aluminum frame and 3 16 inch thick marine grade aluminum plate. The 3 16 inch material is used on the compartment sidewalls and floors as well as the hose bed sidewalls. It has left and right side full height compartments and a huge extended depth tailboard compartment. The poly tank has a capacity of 1,000 gallons. The pump is a 1,750 GPM Hale QMAX powered by IDEX Fire and Safety's innovative SAM system to create a safer operating environment for firefighters. To get more information on the SAM system, or to schedule a demo of this SAM pumper at your department, 
Call your local Ferrera dealer today or send an email to the address at the bottom of the screen. All right, we're back. And while we let uh, Paul get over to the front bumper of the uh, of the pumper, um, by the way, I did want to mention that uh, we are following all protocols for uh, social distancing. So you may notice that Paul doesn't have a, a mask on this morning, but everybody is far enough away from each other that uh, that that we're able to that we're able to bring this to you. Uh, obviously, one of the things that stands out to me on this truck uh, is the SAM uh, pump control system. First time I saw that was at FDIC International 2019 when they debuted it. Um, Bill, your uh, your impressions uh, after seeing the video? Well, it's an impressive rig. Obviously, um, large hose bed, large water tank, big pump. Um, I'm an old vernier throttle push pull control kind of guy. So that uh, SAM pump control system is very intriguing to me. Um, you know, it's funny. Uh, I had a, uh, I always tell the story. I had a um, Hummer H3 that unfortunately uh, uh, was involved in an accident. I don't have it anymore. But that had, uh, for instance, your heater control was just two knobs, fan and heat. Uh, I got a Ford Explorer with a touch screen <laughs> and it, it was a big learning curve to do using the touch screen to adjust your, uh, your temperature and your fan settings and things like that. So for an old guy like me, the SAM pump control would take a little bit of, uh, getting used to, but it certainly looks like it, uh, it, it's an amazing, uh, system to put all those controls into such a small panel and be able to do it on either side. Of the truck is, is even more impressive. All right, great. Well, hopefully uh, Paul is ready for us now over uh, over at the uh, over at the front bumper. Um, wanted to uh, check into uh, some of the uh, other engine options. Obviously, again, we're we're looking for the the, the powertrain there. And uh, what are the other options for for motors on the uh, on on the uh, on the cinder chassis? Well, the cinder. This one has a 450 horsepower Cummins L9. The cinder chassis itself is designed around the L9 platform, and you can get that from 350 on up to uh, 450 horsepower. Okay, and that front bumper extension, I wanted to ask again about that. Uh, what is the size of that? And uh, on this truck, uh, what, size, uh, what size pipe, uh, is, uh, pipe is plumbed to the, uh, to the bumper? Okay, this is a 24 inch extension. And the cinder, just like we uh, talked about on the Inferno, you can take that from six inches out to 28 on your bumper extension. The front jump line is uh, piped two inches all the way up to a uh, inch and a half reducer at the swivel. Bill, uh, what, uh, I know you've got a couple of questions too. Uh, why don't you take it from here? Yeah, um, the, uh, I saw in the um, video that the, uh, the cab the back of the cab and the cab roof is uh, is tread plate. Is that an option, or is that standard, or uh, what's that with the uh, with the this particular model? The back wall of the cab on the cinder comes standard with aluminum diamond plate, and you can put tread plate on the cab roof. That's an option. Okay, very good. And um, the interior of the cab, you know, um, with the 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 uh, carcinogen uh, situation with, um, you know, debris and so forth after fighting a fire. I was wondering, um, how, um, user friendly is this as far as cleaning the interior of the cab? You can, uh, it, the interior of the cab is all metal. And of course you got the, uh, the vinyl floor matting. So it's easy to uh, wash down. And then you can use any of the CDC recommended guidelines for decon in the truck. So whether you're fogging it or wiping it with alcohol. Excellent. Um, I saw on the um, uh, on the other video that truck had a uh, tread plate floor. Is that a, is that an option to do tread plate uh, on the floor? 
It is, and when you do a tread plate floor with us, you still get the noise insulating uh, floor mat, and then we overlay that with the aluminum diamond plate. So it makes the cab really nice and quiet. Okay, that, that's, uh, that's good. Um, with the thousand gallons of water and that hose load, uh, I was wondering what, the, what your uh, axle capacities are on, the, uh, on this rig. Great question. The uh, truck is built with a 20,000 pound front axle, 27,000 pound rear axle, so 47,000 total GVW. Uh, and you're going to have more than enough carrying capacity for your NFPA equipment load, probably a little okay. bit more than that. Very good. And um, with that kind of weight pushing around, what kind of brakes are you using on the front and rear? We've got uh, disc on the front and that's a 17-inch uh, rotor, and then on the rear we've got uh, S-cams. All right, very good. Um, I think that was, uh, that was the things that I noticed, Chris. Okay, one, uh, I, I wanted to touch uh, for a second on uh, multiplexing. That was something that, that was a theme that, that we had last week. We, we discussed it on the, on the rigs. Um, in this case, I think we're, uh, we need to cut back to, to, uh, to the desk. Um, I think uh, Bert or Jason would be best to answer, to answer this question. This, uh, Paul mentions in the video that this truck uses the E20 uh, multiplex system. Is that, is that a proprietary uh, system for Ferrer? And could you give us a little bit more background on what that system is? So this particular version of it is proprietary to Ferrera, but we work with IDEX and they took the best features of both the Weldon VMUX and the Class 1 S key system and we've combined them in this next generation electric system and through some uh, nodes and through the software these two systems can communicate and so while this is uh, one of the pioneer versions of that, there will be a version to roll out to our sister companies as well. So this is what you'll see coming out of the IDEX electrical with the combination of the two systems. Okay, great. Thank you. I had a couple more questions for Paul before we before we cut over to some of our audience questions. Uh, they are uh, about uh, about SAM. Um, so the, the the SAM system is the primer also controlled uh, by SAM, and if not, what what primer is used? Now, the, when you are in uh, SAM mode, uh, the primer is going to be operated by SAM. You can operate in manual mode, obviously, and then you would have the uh, primer switch for the hail prime. Okay, and uh, uh, somewhat related, but but not, uh, you didn't mention in the video, uh, is there a generator on this truck? And if so, what size? There is not a generator on the, uh, on the SAM truck. Uh, there is room to put one on there if you wanted to. Uh, truck's for sale today. Um, but uh, uh, this one does not have one on right now. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I think, I think we're at about the point where we can start getting into some Q&A with the audience. We've, we've got quite a few. And Bill, of course, feel free to, feel free to jump in. Um, get, getting back to the SAM system, we have a number of questions about that. Um, are the preset pump pressures, are they able to be overridden? Yes, so you can go to manual mode and you can uh, manually change the uh, pressures. And then of course, when you're doing your setup with the SAM system, you can select which pressure you wanna have as your preset. Okay, and is there a backup system? This is, this is actually one of the things that we've heard any number of times, not necessarily about a, a system like SAM, but when we get into electronic valves and things like that, the, the question always comes up, if there, is, if there is an issue for whatever reason, what is the backup system to get those valves open or closed? Right, so there is a manual backup, so you can access the uh, valves from the uh, hinge access panel on the right side put a wrench on it, open your valve up. You can go to manual mode, in which case you've got the uh, class one twister throttle control. Okay, and here's another question uh, that, that also lends itself toward, uh, toward design. Um, and it, it's about SAM, but it also does relate to a lot of other things that we've seen through the years, trying to condense the, the size of that pump panel. Um, and so uh, with, with the SAM pump controls, uh, how, I, 
The question is, can you get a smaller pump panel since there are no le levers or, or controls? But I guess uh, as a follow up to that, how I guess how narrow can it go uh, if, if possible? Right. You can absolutely narrow it up if you want to. Um, we left our kind of our standard uh, width pump module for service on this. But if you look at our popular MVP uh, line of rescue pumpers, uh, with that, all of our electric valves, you can crunch that pump panel down to 32 to 36 inches width. Okay, and that is actually one of the pumps we'll be seeing, or one of the rigs we'll be seeing tomorrow will be an MVP, so keep, uh, keep an eye out uh, for that. Yep, that's called the preview. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, what, is the, uh, what is the cross lay and main hose bed height? Uh, cross lay height is going to be about uh, 78 inches on this model here. You can obviously go up or low, you know, above or below that uh, when you're doing a, a custom build. Each one of the cross lays is uh, capable of holding 200 feet of hose. So we've got two inch and three quarter, one, two and a half. And then we've got a standard height hose bed right here. So you're about uh, eight feet up to the hose bed. You can do an L-shaped tank with any of our models whether it's a 500, 750, or like you'll see it, another preview, on the St. George truck tomorrow, a thousand gallon L-shaped tank. And that will, of course, lower the hose bed. Chris, a quick question for Paul. Um, did, did anybody um, raise an issue about uh, the touch screens, like in the winter and, you know, in, in clement weather, gloved hands, things like that, as far as adjusting? Adjusting valves and so forth on the uh, touch screens. Yeah, great question. The SAM uh, touch screen is designed to be used if the uh, uh, if it's raining, if you got uh, some snow on it. Uh, you can also use a glove hand and swipe open your uh, your valve control. So it's basically designed for the fire service. You know, kind of the inclement uh, conditions that you're going to encounter. Okay, very good. If we could stay on that shot just for now, um, I have a, a question, a pretty specific question about that pump panel. Uh, what are the four LED displays to the left of the SAM display? Okay, another good question. So if I go into manual mode with the SAM and I want to operate not off of the touchscreen, but in manual mode, then all of my pre-connects are right here and I can go ahead and open and close those valves. Okay, let's see here, just still scrolling through. We got a lot of, lot of good questions coming in today. I love, I love the conversation with, with the audience. It's, uh, it's one of the keys to this and it's been really great uh, last week and obviously today. Um, getting away from the SAM system for a second but staying at the, at the cab, um, what are some of the clean cab options uh, with Ferrara fire apparatus? Bill touched on one a little while ago with the hard surfaces inside the cab. Are, 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 are you doing anything else on, on the clean cab concept? Yeah, and it's, uh, that's a huge rabbit hole. We could probably spend the entire day going over uh, clean cab uh, options. Uh, some of the more popular ones that we do a lot of, uh, uh, Bostrom has a uh, zippered seat cover option that's available. This foam in the seat cushion is encapsulated so you can take the uh, dirty uh, seat covers off. Uh, you get an extra set when you pick that option up. You can, while the dirty ones are being laundered, you can uh, put the replacement set on. You can also put a HEPA filter on top of the uh, engine tunnel to uh, clean the air inside the cab. And, you know, again, just kind of a myriad of, of options. Those are two of the most common ones that we do when we do a clean cab. Obviously, you know, a lot of times on the clean cab, there's no SCBA seat in the cab. They're all non-SCBA packs are cleared in a compartment. You're absolutely right. That really is a rabbit hole you can go down today because there's so much that, that we're doing in terms of that with the, with the heightened awareness uh, about uh, reducing exposure and, and right. things like that. Um, now you're, you're back at the pump panel luckily because I have another Sam question that just came in, seeing a real theme here. Um, but uh, with all the right. screen, uh, and you know, uh, Bill had asked uh, the question about the screen. Does the SAM screen, uh, I guess the best way to ask it would be, how does it, how does it deal with sunlight glare, uh, with, with glare from the sun? Is there anything mm -hmm. on there uh, that, that, works, uh, that, that works to reduce the glare? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's got a 
it's got a glare reducing cover to it so even in bright sunlight you can uh, you've got good visibility with the screen and then it's got a nighttime mode also so it will go from a, a light to a dark screen at night kind of like you, the dash does on your car well not on not on bill's <laughs> uh, hummer h3 let's see um question about uh this is obviously this this is a demo um, but has uh, Ferrara been delivering um, yes. other rigs to departments yet? Have you delivered a number of them with the SAM system? We are about to, yes, sir. Uh, and that's going to be kind of a uh, something we're going to talk about tomorrow with the uh, with the St. George truck. So we've got uh, a bunch of those rolling down the production line right now. Okay. Is the uh, is the SAM system? Will it be available on aerials? Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Yep. Anything that's got a pump on it, we can put the SAM system on. Okay. Boy, we got we got a tremendous amount of questions <laughs> coming in about the SAM system. Boy, uh, is there a remote option for the SAM screen? You can, yeah. Another great question. You can get a, uh, a tablet from IDEX, and it allows the operator to uh, control it same way as you would with the screen right here, but you can walk around the truck uh, with the tablet in his hand. Moving back to the cab for a second. This is another one of those uh, very specific questions. I hope I hope I get it right. I hope it's uh, it, it's clear. Um, what is the switch panel below the uh, left hand crew seat? The LH crew seat. That is your rear cab AC and heater. So we've got uh, two separate AC systems, one for the front cab, one for the rear cab. Uh, all of the evaporators for the AC are uh, low mounted, so they drain down through the floorboards. We don't use any headliner mounted AC. So right back here, you've got your on off and then your uh, fan speed. Uh, with this truck, uh, or I guess, I mean, this, this question came in during the, the video for, for this truck. But it applies, I think, to 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 across the board. Um, can you offer independent front suspension uh, on this? We sure can. Uh, we have a Rayco Granning independent front suspension, which takes our normally great cramp angle of 45 degrees with the Hendrickson SteerTech up to 48 degrees when you select the IFS option. Okay. Now, uh, Paul, once again, thank you very much. I'm getting you off the hook a little bit here. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna move back All over right. to Jason. We have a, a question for him, and it, re, it, it it's regarding the uh, the bodies uh, uh, that Ferrara offers. Uh, the body the, the two the, the two trucks we've seen today, the bodies on them have been the extruded aluminum bodies. Uh, but what other and again, Jason, this is for you. What other types of bodies uh, does uh, Ferrara manufacture? Or what are some of the other options for fire departments? Yeah, Chris, that's a great question and a great point. Like Paul alluded to earlier, we're a truly customized uh, manufacturer. So we have a form body that is galvanized steel, stainless steel, and aluminum material that we offer across all product lines. Okay, and we actually have one more question here from the audience, and this is specifically, uh, this is specifically for Jason. Um, let me make sure I, I need to make sure I get it right. It comes from Nick Saban and he asks, how many times exactly has Alabama <laughs> beaten LSU? He's just curious. <laughs> My memory's not good today, so I'd say we won the last game. Go Tigers. All right, guys. Well, we are just about uh, up on uh, up on uh, the end of this. Our uh, first first two walk around these our first two walk arounds of week two. I would like to uh, thank everybody who joined me today. Bill, who will be back tomorrow for the next two. Uh, Bert, Jason, Paul, thank you for everything. Paul, man, voiceover man, live <laughs> on screen man, you know, Bill's first customer, you know, or, <laughs> or, um, running the gamut, baby. <laughs> but I, I, just as a review for the rest of today, from 11 to 1, we did have a lot of questions come in today from the audience. Again, the conversation has been great today. That's one of my favorite parts about, about what we've been doing uh, these past two weeks. 
And uh, if you, if for some reason we did not have enough time to get to your question, now is the perfect time from 11 to 1 and also from 2 to 4.30 to go out uh, to, the, to the showroom, request a meeting with a Rev, uh, with a Rev Fire Group, a Ferrara specifically representative. Um, also, uh, if you uh, want to come back later today and, and review this again, this will be available on demand. We'll let you know. We'll let you know when it's available. And also, do not forget from one to two today, May Day Monday, spy, as is FDIC International Powered Education, May Day Monday Tips and Techniques for Firefighter Survival. And that is uh, being presented by Chief Tony Carroll. So don't forget that. Uh, so one o'clock today. Again, my thanks to everybody. Tomorrow, we will have another two walk arounds. We alluded to them. Uh, we're going to have an MVP pumper and another custom pumper that uh, that we uh, that uh, that Paul teased a little bit in terms of some of the some of the offerings on there uh, from 11 to 2:30 tomorrow. We'll have Rev showroom meetings and we'll have another webinar from 2:30 to 3:30 tomorrow by Rev, and it's going to cover financing apparatus and other purchasing options. So don't forget that we'll have a wrap up today on social media at 4:30. So please stick around. Go. Check out the showroom. Talk to some Rev representatives. Get your questions answered. Again, we're sorry if we couldn't get to them uh, during this, but uh, but the uh, representatives are available uh, to answer your questions. So again, this has been Chris McClune for uh, Rev Fire Group uh, Apparatus Conference and Expo. Have a good one. Stay safe, and we'll see you in a little while. <laughs>